Hi there, my name is Mike Bankhead. I am a bass player and songwriter from Dayton, Ohio, and on the podcast today. I welcome back Mike Tome. Mike Tome, who is tastefully named, is a good friend of mine and a fan of the Minnesota Twins. And when he's around, we talk about baseball. So this is a baseball podcast. You'll be hearing about how our favorite teams are doing, both real and fictional. You'll be hearing speculation on why offense is down, who interesting rookies are. Why are the Reds so terrible? Well, maybe not why, but just us talking about how the Reds are so terrible. All kind of stuff. Buckle up. Baseball. Hey there, Mike Tomey. Welcome back. Hey, glad to be with you. We're going to talk about baseball because when you're here, I talk about baseball. I like it. Uh, let's first talk about your Minnesota Twins. We are at the quarter pole of the season, one fourth of the season gone. They are 25 and 16 and in first place. Yeah. Like, was I the only person that thought that? I mean, I was pretty positive last time I thought about that. I mean, I'm feeling good. You were. I figured they'd make the playoffs, but man, I didn't think they'd just jump out to a lead. Well, the division's a little bit underperforming. I mean, the Guardians should be better uh, than they are. The Sox are a little disappointing. Um, Kansas City's Kansas City. I mean, there's some bright <laughs> spots there, but, you know. But Detroit, I, I really don't understand what's going on there. I, I thought they'd be a little bit better. But the Twins have been just taking care of business in their division. They've won a lot of one-run games, which was their Achilles hero, heel last year. So uh, I think the clubhouse is in a good place. They called up Royce Lewis. Nice. He got some action, the number one prospect. So that was good. Of course, we're all upset about him going back down, but it's like the kid needs to play shortstop. So send him back down. He'll be back. He'll be back. As soon as you guys move Correa for some prospects. Exactly. Exactly. Although I don't know now. I mean, I, I thought they'd be better, but in first place, you don't deal Correa now. You, like you roll with it. Yeah, I think you wait another two months and see where you are, right? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, they're going to have to hit a little bit better right now. I mean, but but that's the, everybody's pitching is pretty good except for the Reds. But that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> uh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Um, I was actually going to touch on that later, but let, let's table the the hitting being down because it's noticeably down. Yes, yes. Um, Buxton playing pretty well. Yeah, it's about time. <laughs> Man, but I think I like what you said. You got to what wrap them in some uh, bubble wrap. I mean, the kid is fragile, but he's an MVP though. Like that's the oh, talent level. Incredible, yeah, incredible. He's playing awesome. I, I think even the scouts wondered if he would ever hit for power. I remember that kind of being a thing, but then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, he's learning to pull the ball. Uh, I remember watching one game. They were talking about him how he was striking out so much, especially on inside pitches and then he'd chase a curveball outside or down in the zone and they said as soon as he starts to realize that okay I wait for a pitch I can hit and I think he's finally learned that like yeah I can pull the ball but it needs to be a pitch I can send into the upper deck and and I think he's learned that upper deck means runs yeah did and you it, see the one hit over the batter's eye into the uh into the, uh, the restaurant. I did I not. What's, what ballpark was it? In, in Minneapolis. I did not. I think it was that one. And they also hit one in the third deck up and left, which he's hit a couple spots that only like the big boys are hit. I mean, like it's exciting. Yeah. So meanwhile, as you know, I'm a fan of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club. And yes. they are playing about as well as they did this year last time. Which I know. It's like the same. Gives like, me hope. But Yeah, it's just cruise along, let's play decent, keep ourselves close. They have lost in the last couple of weeks. First of all, they've lost a lot of one-run games, unlike your twins. Uh, second, they've lost a lot of games that are winnable. And a lot of it's due to questionable managerial decisions. Uh, the Braves manager doesn't really know how to manage uh, a pitching staff or a bullpen. And it did not come back to bite him last year, strangely enough. So there's no way they're going to replace the guy. He just won a World Series. Mm -hmm. But like today, he sends he sends Ian Anderson out for the seventh, down one. No, 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 no. You got six innings out of Anderson. Let's, let's yeah, shut it down. And third time through the order. Yeah, yeah. Come and you've, you've got more than enough arms to go seven, eight, nine in your bullpen. Well, I mean, but... 
they had to send a few arms down. I mean, you can't they have did, but they've 16 got, now, but... <laughs> they, they've got enough to get through three innings. Yeah. So Anderson, it go, they go single, single, and he's out the game. So he gets no outs and leaves the game with two runners on base. And the next guy comes in and promptly allows two runs to score. So now you're down three. Braves ended up losing by one today. Right? Uh, how about... Snicker, don't let your pitchers go a third time through the order. And when he's when when he's done a nice job and it's only down one run after six, that's when you bring in your best bullpen arm. Because mm-hmm. if you put up zeros on the other team the rest of the game, guess what? You win. That's right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there, uh, there's been a lot of those winnable ones that they've choked away. Uh, I'm a strong proponent of that. Get get through the lineup twice. And go from there. I and, mean, and the math shows that. I know this is like old. This is not an old school thing to do, but the numbers show that the third time through the order after the hitters have had two looks at a pitcher, them getting used to him plus him getting tired means yep. bad things. Yeah, yeah. That's why to me those you know, like two setup guys and a closer or whatever the case you've got. That's really hard to find guys that can throw gas and strike people out. But if you've got those. Uh, you're fine. I don't think you need, I mean, I starting pitching is great. You need innings, but man, if you can, if you can shut them down at the end of the ball game, there's nothing like that. So here's the thing, Mike, every team's got three of those guys. Not everybody's got six of those guys. That's well, I guess that's true. Not all managers are willing to go to those guys in the sixth or seventh. Yeah. Or a lot of them, the, the closer is their best guy. And sometimes that guy needs to come in at the bottom of the fifth with two dudes on, right? <laughs> <laughs> but they don't do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a more, pre- I mean, that's a bigger pressure spot. But you know how it is. Those guys get used to it. The ninth is mine. I don't care it, it, if anyone's on base or wh- whatever. It, that's my spot. You put me somewhere else, I don't know how to handle it. Which is ridiculous. They're professionals. They get paid to get out. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, one of these days you're going to have to hire us for a, to run a team, and then we'll, we'll have that settled out. Just break all the rules, but still call it baseball. I mean, that would be fun. Most of the rules are silly and can be disproven with math. And to the, to the general business's credit, it's not like the front offices are not full of people that know this stuff. It's mm-hmm. a matter of getting the on-field personnel to buy in, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like the movie Moneyball. Kind of, but that movie didn't really explain the premise of the book all that well. Um, well, but then they would have lost half their audience. I this mean, is true. We would have loved it, but, you know, <laughs> this is true. the rest of Hollywood would have been like, um, yeah, we can't let this film go out like this. <laughs> I think the if, if, if anyone who's listening to us has seen Moneyball, know that it was it was a valiant attempt. But I think if you take one thing that you remember away from that movie where the 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 manager asked the rhetorical question, do I care if someone gets on base via a hit or a walk? And the other guy goes, you do not. You do not, yeah. Take that away. Just don't make outs. Like offense is about not making outs and defense is about getting outs. And it really all boils down to that. Yes, yes. So have you read articles about like analyzing why offense is down? No, I haven't started that down that stretch. Um, I've noticed it big time and I'm trying to figure out what it is. I thought, well, initially, so this is me. I haven't looked anything up. It's just my brain goes, okay, well, it's not because the pitchers are not warmed up and not, you know, because there was this ex- shortened spring break or, you know, spring training. And I thought, oh, well, is it because there's more pitchers? Uh, are the batters not warmed up? Is, is the weather been cold? I, I don't know. It's I really ball. don't know. Speculation is it's the ball okay, or the humidor. So now every ballpark uses the humidor yes. so that the ball can be consistent in humidity across the league, um, which when summer comes, offense has traditionally always gone up in the summer. So Correct. We'll see. So that's what I was saying. I was like, okay, maybe it's just a, one of those years. But a lot of people think, uh, I read way too much about this, it's the ball. And um, I guess that makes sense if you're a conspiracy theorist, right? Manfred and the front office guys want to get more balls in play. Mm -hmm. Fewer three true outcomes. Well, if the ball doesn't fly as far because there's more drag, guess what? It's in play, not over the fence. Yeah. And I've seen, just from anecdotally watching games, I watched the the Atlanta National League Baseball Club against the Mets. And I don't like the Mets, of course, but I have their leadoff hitter on my fantasy team. And And we have to respect the fact that 
the Mets might have figured it out, despite the fact that both of their top pitchers are out. They might have, but they're the Mets, so this it's not going to work out for them. <laughs> just have faith that it won't work. I just had to throw that in, just just, and so did you. So, <laughs> uh, but Nemo caught one really well, uh, and it really should have been like in the second deck, and it died on the warning track. And like you could see as he was jogging off the field, the pitcher yelling at him that he thought he had it. And anecdotally, there's been a lot of balls that have been barreled solidly squared up and they've been dying on the running on the warning track or not even um and then of course uh lots of your weak contact strangely enough dropping which uh is kind of not how it's supposed to work like if you're a hitter you're supposed to try to hit the ball in the sweet spot and hit it as far as you can mm -hmm. right you should be rewarded for hitting a screaming line drive and that's not happening and uh, a lot of batters are getting rewarded for weak contact um Apparently, they recalibrate the expectations on the numbers about around midseason, so we'll see how it stacks up historically. But so far, yeah, runs are down, hits are down, home runs are down. And the pitchers are the same dudes, so... Yeah, and they don't have the sticky stuff, so... They don't. <laughs> so it's, it, it's, been a, it's, it's been odd. Well, here's, the, here's the thing that's, that, that solidified it in my mind. Are you familiar with the uh, expected batting average, that metric? Mm-hmm. All right, so Mike knows it. You listeners, if you don't know it, here's how it works. So I'll go back a few years. In 2015, ballparks installed really, really expensive cameras everywhere to capture the movement of the baseball on the field. And they have a software system called StatCast that measures everything that happens with the baseball. So when the ball is struck, they know the angle at which it's hit, how fast it's hit coming off the bat, and where it's going. So since 2015... This is a reasonably large sample size, right? Eight, seven, eight years. I mean, yeah. Six, six years and change. There's a certain amount of balls that have been hit at a given, let's say, at a right field at a given angle and a given miles per hour off the bat. Some of those are hits. Some of those are not. If you hit a ball to right field at that specific miles per hour in that specific angle, there is literal statistical data that says you're going to get a hit X percentage of the time, and they mm -hmm. phrase that as expected batting average. So it's based on what has already happened. It is a predictive stat. Uh, well, and then they've got numbers of how much percent of the time that batter goes in that direction. That's true. So also as another statistical measure. That's true. And you might be thinking, well, what about run speed? There is enough, there's a different stat that takes into account the batter's running speed in case it's like, you know, a ground ball. But this is just purely off the bat, where it's going. Of all the balls hit to this place, is it a hit or not? Ronald Acuna hit one to dead center field that had an expected batting average of 1,000. Meaning for the last six years, every time a ball has been hit to that location at that velocity and at that launch angle, it has not He's been gone. out. Yeah. Usually it's because it's over the fence. Yeah. Uh, he got caught on the warning track. I have seen that more recently this year. That's true now that you are men I, mentioning it. Yeah. But when the data says that your expected batting average on this is 1,000, meaning no one has ever hit the ball that way and not had it not be over the fence. So Ronnie, Ronnie, he got him on one of those. Yeah. Like well, here's the problem, though, with what you're saying, Mike. See, some one of somebody who's like a data analyst or uh, you know, a scientist is going to come up and show some sort of other reason why that's not true. You know, like the guys that get paid to like look at numbers all day long. Sure, they could. Sure, they could. And it, obviously, Actually, I'd like to see that. It's not like the front offices don't know this about the expected bag thing or rich and expected waba. I mean, but what do you do about it? I don't think that you can tell your hitters stop trying to hit the ball hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that that just you don't want to prioritize results over the, over the reproach. Yeah. I think you just have to be more precious about not wasting outs. Yeah, uh, take the extra base when you can, but not do anything stupid and uh, manage your pitchers better, right? What else? Yeah. Now are strikeout strikeouts up too? I haven't it feels like they are, but I thought I they were on looked. pace. I thought they were about on pace this last year. Okay. Um, so I could just be misreading what I see. The strikeouts have been up compared to the. But I mean, even baseball. more than oh. last year. But well, let's. Uh, you talk about the Twins. Yeah. It's not been an all. No, I want to talk about the Reds. I got to go back to the Reds. Yeah. Let's. You know what? We so have a Red... lot of friends who are Reds fans. Yeah. Let's talk so, about the Reds. So the Reds. <clears throat> I saw this stat that says basically the team was hitting like 226 or something like that as a team. Uh, 
And basically that meant that their entire lineup was full of number nine hitters. Now, this was before Joey Votto was on the IL for COVID-19 or undisclosed reasons. Excuse me. Maybe I shouldn't say that. So with him, and then I looked at their team ERA. Now, team ERA, this was again a couple of weeks ago. Team ERA for the Reds was six. So I'm looking through there and I'm like the Yankees are two point something. Okay, all right. So everybody's pitching great, except for the Reds. Oh, and also, the Yankees don't have a friendly pitching ballpark. They got that yes. short right field. So. so then I flip back and look at team average. And, of course, no teams are hitting. Like, nobody's hitting. But the poor Reds are way down there. And you know who's actually hitting worse than them is Pittsburgh. But they have yeah. more, more wins. Like, that's just sad. The Reds actually have a handful of actual major league ball players. They're just looking at you, Joey Valo, Fado. They're just all really underperforming. Well, Joey right. hit his first home run today. Yeah, Joey's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, but the one thing that he does historically in his career is take his walks and get on base, right? And his yeah. OBP is really down. Yeah, yep. He's is striking he, out more. Is he getting old? He might just be getting old. It comes for everyone. It, yeah. It hits everybody at some point. No, but I, t- to me, that the reason is not the on the field performance for the Reds. It's their manager in the team, in the city, and the team, and how they feel about him. You can't make comments in the press like you did and expect your team to perform well. You just can't. No. That and said, can- he, they did remove a lot of actual decent ball players from that club, but it's not sure. like from well, a talent you can't make level, money. I feel like if they you don't have, have players. That's true. <laughs> but I feel like they have more talent on the field than the Pirates do. Probably. I mean, their team is more talented than Oakland. Like, what in the world? Did you see the attendance, by the way, at one of their games? It was like 4,000 or 5,000 or something ridiculous. And, and that was an inflated number. <laughs> you scan the crowd, you're like, oh my. I don't there's know no, that I'd want to go to the Oakland game unless I was on one of those let's see all the ballparks. <laughs> and uh, they could probably still skip it. <laughs> Strikeouts are down at oh. the beginning of the season. Hashtag small sample size. So okay. we'll see where we'll that see. is, uh, you know, in two more months at the, at the halfway point. But strikeouts are actually down. So strikeouts are down, and the, which means really that the league's getting what they want, balls in play. They're turning it out. Yeah. I don't know. I like strikeouts and home runs. I Me don't too. Know. Me too. <laughs> Let's, let's, let's let them have sticky again and get rid of that baseball that's fair. Like, yeah, let's on. go back to the old let's, bouncy, bouncy yeah, ball. Let's just go ahead and make then all the ballparks the same size. No, let's not do that. But here's what you want. Well, to I do. mean, if we're going to talk about the ball being the same, then it's not fair. That's true. Here's what you do. All right. You make all the ballparks super huge, like Coors Field, but, you know, bigger. Because if there's more outfield space, guess what happens on a ball and play? A lot more room for it to fall in. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. Yeah. Nobody talk about that, though. Bunch of doubles. And triples. Mm-hmm. Like old school baseball. Like I mean, old like... school baseball, except for with black people. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect that. That's pretty good. <laughs> so at the quarter pole, you're happy with the Twins. Yes, I'm Yes. And yes. I am deeply, deeply ambivalent about the, Na- the Atlanta National League Baseball Club. So I saw an article about the offseason moves, and both of our teams were in there on the wrong side of the offseason moves. So one was Freddie Freeman signing with L.A., and gosh, he's been great there. That was going to happen, though, so I don't really blame the management for that. Yeah. So... Olsen's not hitting for power yet, but nobody is. So are right. we worried? No. Okay. I'm worried about Junior being healthy. Yeah. He just came back. They're treating him with kid gloves. Like, they're not letting him play the outfield. He's DHing and taking a bunch of days off. Uh, really, there's an outfield hole in that team. They've got people that can't play defense, much like the Phillies. Uh, but they're the playing, <laughs> they playing, they playing them on defense. <laughs> Right. And uh, what the Braves really need is a center fielder that can be a center fielder and hit. They had one. His name was yeah, Christian Pache. <laughs> yeah, they did. Who, who, yeah. 
So how's he playing? I actually haven't looked recently. You know, he's I saw little, he's making. I saw a couple games. He's making I, sparkling defensive plays like every other game. Yeah. Uh, he's not really hitting that well, but I mean, he's got a couple home runs, and the, apparently the fans out there love the guy. So, well, what's not what's not to like? I'm gonna go look at his numbers real quick. But he was. I mean, I guess if you don't make that deal, you don't get Olsen, right? But. Uh, couldn't you have sent Waters? <laughs> uh, that was probably the front office discussion. And they, I'm sure the answer was no, we we're no. going to need more. <laughs> uh, Pache's on base percentage, 190. That is not exemplary. Yeah. So not much better hitting than he did last yeah, year. But two two home okay. runs. You know what? He'll get it together. I mean, Buxton had years where you're like, is this guy ever going to hit? Right. But here's the thing. Even if he doesn't hit, he's going to give you a positive war just from taking runs away. Sure. Sure. Right? And it's Which, fun to watch. And he's fun to watch. The Braves don't have anyone that's as good defensively as him, and it's not remotely close. I mean, I, I think you need him. Again, it's not – look, if he wasn't that good, the A's wouldn't be playing him every day, right? I mean, yeah. he's taking runs away. And so I've been watching a few Twins games, and I did watch a couple – the, the whole series basically with Oakland. So I saw Pache in the outfield and Buxton. That was fun. So then my dad and I went to a Clippers game here in Columbus and went to the St. Paul Saints. And like, there's no talent left at AAA for, for Minnesota. Oops. Uh, when I'm watching the outfield, I'm like, man, Buxton would have gra- grabbed that. There were so many plays like watching minor league ball. It was fun. Mind you, it was good, but you could tell like the talent on the field wasn't there. Yep. And uh, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing to see a guy chase down a ball in center field and rob a home run or dive in the gap. I, I love that. Athleticism at its finest. Like you can't teach to someone being a straight beast when they run, right? Yeah. But maybe that's why they get hurt a little bit. I mean, sometimes maybe, maybe they shouldn't try that hard. I don't know. Sure I, makes it fun, though. I agree with you about AAA. We caught a game just a couple of years ago in Toledo, and we got to see uh, Stephen Burrow on a rehab assignment. He's a very mediocre pitcher, but he's lefty, so he's going to have a long and illustrious career. And uh, Key Brian Hayes was still on the farm then. And that yeah. dude hit two long home runs to left field. You can just tell he was better than everybody on the field. Yep. Um, something about minor league baseball, you can tell who the really good ones are from yeah. in person. Yeah. Yep. Now, I'm wondering, I haven't been to a double A game in a while, but it, there's a lot more guys making a jump from double A. And you kind of, I, I kind of wonder, like, is, is there more talent in major league baseball? And that these are the guys that, aren't quite good enough that are still in triple a or I think that's what it is. You know, look, if you're a star, you're not going to spend much time at any level. True. Right. Like guys like Harper, how long were they on the farm before they in Strasburg? Like I'm talking about your top talent. Yeah. None not of those long. guys spend a full, look at, all right. To, to go back to our fantasy league, just real briefly, look at Nolan Gorman. Yeah. yeah. He was in triple a for 34 games and they were yeah. like, uh, you're hitting too many home runs. Time to call you up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You can't put it's that just, guy there for a season. Yeah. What a great story. Yeah. Hey, so let's talk about our fantasy team because I was going to offer him to you in a trade. Uh, yeah, let's talk about it. But it's, it's early. And I, I know you got to go to sleep soon. So we're at the quarter <laughs> pole. Yeah. You are currently in next to last place. Yeah, I know. I would like you to explain to me what, what, what went wrong. Uh, well, the slide recently is, is real. I'm, I, I was in sixth recently. I don't know what's happening right now. Do you look? I'm not sure what went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody have, early is going to watch this, you know? I know. No, no, seriously, I actually don't know. Other than I'm surprised that I have no pop. Like, I have no home runs. Did you come out of the auction with the team you wanted is the first question? Because that's always hard, right? Close. I thought I, thought I had proven guys that and then i would get some decent production out of some others every single one of my guys has got a high on base percentage i thought they would hit more power and nobody's hitting (laughs) right so so you've got got belt he's been hurt but he's he's, for his price no complaints i have never been a chris taylor believer but you got him trey turner trey turner's been bad this year for him yeah he's down he's Uh, down he's 
he's doing everything but hitting for power, and I, and I think he's striking out more than he should. So that hurts you. Well, and, and, and what hurts me more is it was between him and Mookie Betts because I had the money to do so, and Mookie's just destroying it right now. So yeah. I'm like, did I mess that one up? I thought that, that like, I don't know. I thought Turner would Turner, have more pop. Look, I, Turner more. In, a, in a snake league is one of those guys that could go number one. So I get it. Um, he's a 30-homer guy. It's just not happening, and that could be the ball. Um, but his OBP's down. 347 is low for him. Mm-hmm. Vado there at OBP 276. That's, yeah. that's crushing you. Yeah. O- O'Neal's hurt. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I got hit with the, the undisclosed <laughs> COVID 19. <laughs> undisclosed illness. <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, Vado was out for three weeks, and so was uh, another alpha. I'm just McCut- McCutcheon was out for. Three weeks with that. I guess. Age is coming for him, too, by the way. I think so. I like him. I, I've always been a McCutcheon fan. He's slowing down. So the question is, we're only at the quarter pole, so it's too soon for you to quit. Like, Yeah, yeah, because I tell you what, I'm getting trade offers from Votto from that one Nathan guy. Really? And he was kind of frustrated with me that I refused to trade. Trying to buy low, huh? Yeah. He, well, I mean, his well offer he's a Reds was, fan, so. His offer was fair, but. I so why like, didn't you pull the trigger on that? I told are you, him, I said, are you I'm saying not ready to give up? I think you believe Votto's... in Votto. Well, I mean, he was slow last year. If you believe in the Braves, I'm going to believe in Votto. <laughs> I believe in some of the Braves more than others. Yeah, I do not no. believe in Adam Duvall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not ready to give it give it up yet. I uh, I am happy with what I have in the future. So you know, if I have to stretch this out another year and bring all my money to the table again and try again, then that's what we'll do. But so. Mike, we have a long personal tradition in this league of me trading you really talented young dudes <laughs> in a desperate attempt to win now. Yeah. It's a thing. Um, well, I mean, you're like in second place with a team that, frankly, I didn't think would do as well as it is. I got the team I wanted. I'm really thrilled with it. Uh, first of all, let's go into why you didn't think my team was going to be this good. Where, where are the holes that you see? I'm not I saying just, I don't have some, but I want to know what you thought of the weaknesses were. I was just worried you spent your money too early and that the players you got for $1 would not contribute. You know, two of the players I got for $1 are on the 60-day IL, and they're coming later. So you're saying we're in trouble. I got Pomerantz and Kirby H for a dollar each, and they will both be back this summer. And those are both fireballing relief guys. Um, in other words, my whip and ERA are going to get a good shot in the arm. Oh, I also got Dustin May for two. Yeah, well, I never doubted he would be good. but <laughs> He'll be back in like August. But no, that was me gambling that those guys are going to be back, and I just got to hold the line until they're back. Um, I would like to have – I'll tell you one thing. Trent Grisham has been terrible. And that's a guy I kept, and I was expecting great. I was expecting 2020 out of him, and so far he's at one and zero. So, <laughs> well, it's just still time. <laughs> Let's multiply that by four, so you have four and zero. Oh wait, yeah. But uh, Manny Machado, who I spent oh my a gosh. pretty penny on, is win worth every single cent of the dollar. I spent, the, the, like fifty yes. something I spent on him. Yes. Also, that was it was to take my sixty dollars. It was. Uh, Besides Betts or Turner, it was Machado. Those are the guys I circled. I said, one of these three. I thought I got the best, and maybe at the end I will, but Machado is making me mad. Look, if I could have got Turner for the price I paid for Machado, I would have taken it. But yeah. Yeah, Machado went four for four today. Again, uh, he's got eight home runs, seven steals. He's on basing at 430. I'll take that. I d- there, there was one player I didn't get. I will say that. I really like C.J. Cron. And he's and, been in that ballpark too. And I think he went for like seventeen bucks. Does a Reds fan have him? You could probably trade Votto for him. Uh, it is Richard, I believe. Oh, you got to make that offer. <laughs> I mean, he's he's in, yeah. You got to make that offer or throw Votto and you got another red on your team. Throw in another red, and we'll see what happens. I, I think I have yeah, like one of their middle relievers or something. <laughs> so. Let me talk to you about Nolan Gorman, Mike Tommy. Yes. 15 home runs in like 34 games on the farm. Mm -hmm. He's hitting 500 right now. Now, it's not going to hold. Small sample size. He is yet to get his first major league home run, but it's coming. Oh, he'll get it. He's basically, tell me if you think this is accurate, left-handed Dan Ugla. Oh, 
I didn't think about it, man. That's a name from the past. Like everyone loved that guy. But when he was good, not like yeah, not like yeah, not the sure. end of his career, Dan Ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right, he's gonna he's an infielder. He's a little dude that like has a bunch of pop and he's gonna strike out one third of the time. Yeah. I like that. That's so, a good comparison, but I, I think he's got even a higher I think it's higher ceiling. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I wish Chad was here to opine because he's a Cardinals fan. So here's what I've noticed. He's only been up since Friday, but they sat him against the lefty. So I think Gorman's going to sit against lefties. Well, he's a young guy. That's right. what they do. I mean, he didn't sit against lefties in the farm, but like in the big leagues, he probably will f- for a few months. But he's going to play every time they face a right-handed starter. Yeah. Did I mention that I got him in that snake part where I got him for free, which means now that he's up, he'll cost a dollar to keep next year. Uh, but he's gonna trouble. be he's gonna be the second baseman of their future. He's their starting second baseman. So what you so who do you want from my team? Is that what you're you're going at here? I am just you know what? <laughs> I there I I have my eye on two giants. <laughs> Literally. They're both giants and they're both named Charles. Um <laughs> in Spanish. <laughs> and we could discuss this at, you know, I know you don't want to throw in the towel yet. Yes. Uh, but I could use more pitching depth. I'm falling behind on my strikeout pace. I don't have nearly enough starters that I can really rely on. And uh, I only have one closer, and it's okay, but it's not. I don't know that I win the league finishing the season with one closer. No, you can't win ours with that. I, I Especially think with, is it Craig? Does, who, who's got like five closers? Craig doesn't have enough offense. I'm not worried about him. Um, well, I just meant like if you've got, well, oh, I see what you're saying. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right. doesn't matter. Not, not concerned. There, don't, there are... don't, don't get, don't unleash the beast there. We can't make him upset. <laughs> well, he turns he angry. He does. And then he takes it out on the rest of us by yes. crushing us all. Yes. Uh, I think actually in our league, Brett is totally due. How many times has he finished oh, second or third? Oh, my gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like always second or third. And um, I feel like he's going to lead until like July, and then I'm just going to dust him. And I'm, I'm going to apologize in advance. Uh, you, so mean. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and he has to, You know what? I respect him. I really do. I think he plays really well. He does? He's he got did, too many a lot Mets. Of Mets. <laughs> it's going to get you. It's like the guys that, yeah, yeah. But he's got a lot of non-Mets. He did better this year. I will say that. Sorry, Brett. Was there anything more predictable than him grabbing uh, Francisco Alvarez in that minor league draft? <laughs> I mean, it's like, don't even touch him. That's his, right? Yeah, the next, the next Piazza, uh, they say. Well, yeah, exactly. Oh, speaking of catchers, so your guy's up for uh, uh, Baltimore. Oh, uh, Rushman, yeah. Yeah, so how, did you see anything about his debut? I did not. I knew, I knew they were calling him up. I don't know what took him so long. They want yeah. they another year of control. So he got a standing ovation when he was announced. He got a standing ovation on his first catch. Oh, wow. His first plate appearance. He got a triple for his first hit. Hold up, a catcher got a triple? Yeah, so it was uh, – they, they, the fans love them already. The Baltimore fans are so starved for anything that is not just truly awful. Yeah. And that is a long, proud, storied franchise, and they deserve some success. They are in the wrong division. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, the other four teams in their division are, for the most part, really well run. And, like, you know, the Rays are, more, are better run than everybody else, but they have to be because of the resource problem. So, and, so I had to bring it up. Because that was your rookie of the year choice. It and was. So he's, he's up. He's got a chance. I don't know if you've noticed how my rookie of the year for the American League is doing. I forget who it was. It wasn't uh, Kalinick, was it? It's Mr. Joe Ryan of the Minnesota Twins, who was the opening day starter. Uh, well, how's Joe Ryan doing? Why well, his ERA's in the twos, and he's five and two. The uh, five and two part doesn't matter. The ERA in the twos does. <laughs> He's pitched great. Pitchers, it's hard for a pitcher to win that award, though. It's true. They don't have a Cy Young for rookie pitchers, but uh, I don't know. My video is frozen for some reason, but this is not a video podcast, so it doesn't really <laughs> matter. Um, so the offer is Nolan Gorman plus the appetizer of your choice, as long as it's not too terribly painful for me, for your Carloses, who are giants. Oh, man. 
But not today, because I know that yes. you can't throw in the towel today. And that is really a I'm packing it in and I'm heading to next season kind of deal. Perhaps. It is. I mean, you, maybe you do not, that, it's over. Gorman could get on a hot streak and start just hitting home runs, and there's your offense right there, right? Yeah, that's true. Both of my Carlos's. You're having to look to see which Carlos's you have. I like, but you. And that makes. I don't know if you know how names work. Am I getting one of them? Is one of them not Carlos? You should have Doval. I thought you had a Doval and a yeah. Oron. Oh, see, I was a Camilo, so I didn't think ah, that Ah, Camilo. Was... See, uh, see this is I me mean... forgetting the guy's name. Yeah. All right, so he's not a Carlos. He's a Camilo. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. yeah see, your... see, and Camilo sets you up for the future, too. Uh, what'd you pay for him? Not much. Like maybe $12 or something. All right, so that's not going to work for me as far as keeping him, so you can get him back. That's... And let me tell you why. That's true. Let me tell for you why. For you, you don't, especially. I've yeah. got Edward Cabrera for less than five. I've got Dustin May for two. I've got Mackenzie Gore for like eight. I've got Ian Anderson for about five. I got yeah, a lot more, of cheap arms. <laughs> we need more keepers. Yeah. Really? Hey, let, let's convince the commission to listen to this and give us two more. Yeah. Seven keepers. Seven keepers plus the, the, the minor league one, or go six keepers and give us two minor league ones to like build this into a dynasty league. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to have to discuss that. I think I would go give us one more keeper, regular one, and then give us one more minor league keeper. I like it. And then it would, uh, like, especially if you're out of it, it would give you a reason to keep watching baseball and pay attention to the double a and triple a and maybe even the draft like you know drew jones you know whose kid could very well be the first kid taken oh i haven't i haven't noticed i yeah. should and drew jones kid is a senior in high school and like his daddy he runs down everything and yes. apparently has hits for power and has speed and he might be the first draft pick speaking of sons of famous major league baseball players what about that shortstop for the dreaded houston astros and Pena's been looking good. I have not watched a single Astros game this year, and I'm nah, going to apologize that, for that. You don't have to apologize for it. You've been hurt. It's it's okay. I have been. Actually, all of baseball has been hurt by them. I'd like to think the Atlanta National League Baseball Club wreaked some vengeance for in favor of baseball on them last year. Uh, Zoom is telling me I have less than a minute, so it's going to die. So let's let's call it 20 seconds. Any last parting thoughts there, Mike? Hmm. Well... I got to think about your trade. All right. We have, each other, we have each other's number. We'll talk. Go Twins. See you, Mike. See ya. Thanks again to Mike Tomei for taking some time to talk baseball with me. And thank you, dear listener, for joining me. In two days, this Friday on the podcast, I talk to singer, songwriter, and generally decent human being, Greg Owens. We wrote a song together once, but we're not really going to talk about that so much as the album he put out last year. I think you'll really like that episode and you learn about um, a grandmother that carries a 38 gun because, you know, it's the United States. Everybody carries a gun. Come on back Friday and uh, stick around for that one. <laughs>